Howdy folks, Dart here with a review of my first mountain bike, a 2019 Cannondale Trail 5. Made by Durrell's Cycling Sports Group, which is their independent bicycle dealer division, alongside models from brands such as GT and Schwinn Signature. The Trail 5 is Cannondale's mid-range model in the sport and trail hardtail category. Unlike many modern bicycle brands, Cannondale is only available from authorized independent bicycle dealers. Cannondale's Trail Series bikes vary in suggested retail price from $485 to $1,850 depending on the model selected. The Trail 5 reviewed here retails for $1,000. For 2020, Cannondale merged their Catalyst and Trail Series bikes into the Trail Series. Due to this, there are now 8 different Trail models, making the 2020 equivalent of the 2019 Trail 5 as reviewed here, the Trail 4, which also retails for $1,000. I purchased this bike in late October of 2019 to use as a commuter bike. While at the time commuting was my primary purpose for purchasing it, I also wanted a bike that would be capable enough to enjoy riding on mountain bike trails. After having put about 200 miles on it in the three months that I've owned it, I can say with confidence that this bike fits the bill very nicely. As someone who's never owned a bike other than big box bikes prior to this, I find the components on it to be amazing and more than adequate for my current use and skill level. As a matter of fact, I've never even owned a bike with a suspension fork before this. Speaking of suspension forks, the Trail 5 comes equipped with the RockShox XC30 TK. It's a coil sprung fork with 100mm of travel, preload adjustment, and suspension lockout. Many will say that the 100mm of travel isn't enough. As a matter of fact, most of the Trail 5's closest competitors have about 120mm or more of travel. However, with the most aggressive riding that I do, and will probably be doing for the next year or two, being intermediate to advanced single track trails with minimal jumps or drops at most, I have not experienced the suspension bottoming it out on me. As such, I find 100mm of suspension travel to be more than enough for me. I will, however, agree that this fork is lacking in adjustments. When I turn the preload adjustment knob, I can feel only a slight difference in the feel of the suspension. For me, this isn't a deal breaker, as it feels good enough for my purposes. I've also noticed that the lockout feature doesn't completely lock out the suspension. It drastically reduces its travel down from 100mm to about 20mm as a best guess. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, as it still leaves enough travel to soak up a good portion of the bumps you'll find when riding on pavement, while still keeping its rolling efficiency relatively high. Connecting the fork to the frame is a 1 and an eighth inch tapered headset and threadless stem. If you're buying a new mountain bike this day and age, a tapered steer tube is nearly a must. They are stiffer and with less flex, providing better traction and surface feel than models with a straight steerer. The threadless stem is a 4-bolt model made from Cannondale's C4 alloy, which is a 3D Ford 6061 aluminum alloy. On the medium frame, this is 31.8 millimeters long. The main advantage of a threadless stem is going to be its ease of maintenance, modularity, and upgradability. Manufacturers are scaling back on the production of quill stems, which is what you'll see on older bikes and on most big box bikes. This makes upgrades and replacements harder to come by. A threadless stem will be easier to maintain on the trail due to the need to carry fewer tools, as a threadless stem only uses Allen head bolts, while a quill stem will additionally have two large nuts that will require a large wrench to manipulate. Unfortunately, vertical adjustments on a threadless stem are minimal and restricted by the length of the fork steer tube. Adjustments to a threadless stem are performed by removing the stem and relocating spacers above or below the stem as needed, while adjustments on a quill stem are performed by simply loosening an allen bolt, pulling up or pushing down on the stem, and retightening the allen bolt. Both quill and threadless stems need to be replaced to adjust the reach. Additionally, I find that a threadless stem looks better and more robust than a quill stem. Attached to the stem is Cannondale C3 riser bars, which are 780mm wide, and made from 6061 aluminum alloy. In recent years, handlebars on mountain bikes have become wider, and for good reason. When using narrower handlebars, a rider has to make more weight shifts in addition to turning the bars for a corner. The wider bars reduce that need by providing more leverage, thus allowing a rider to make sharp corrections more quickly. This also allows a rider's weight to be shifted for other purposes, such as preparing for a jump, drop, or a rock roll. In addition, the wider bars provide a more comfortable riding experience while in an upright position. Turning our attention to the cockpit, we're greeted with Shimano's MT200 hydraulic brake levers. These levers provide a light yet firm braking feel with plenty of leverage for easy braking. Handling shifting duties is Shimano's Dior 10-speed trigger shifter. 
When you press a trigger, the press is light and responsive, with a reassuring click letting you know it's received your input and is acting on it. The bike comes with Cannondale slide-on grips. These grips weren't the most comfortable and were a pain to remove. I've since replaced them with a pair of Raceface Half Nelson lock-on grips and added a pair of Cannondale bar ends to clean up the look. Handling the stopping duties are Shimano's MT200 hydraulic two-piston brake calipers and 160mm rotors on the front and rear. These brakes provide smooth, solid, predictable, and reliable stopping power in all conditions. They provide enough stopping power that if you pull the front brake too much at any speed, the front wheel will lock up and potentially send you over the bars. Yes, I tried this. The rear wheel came up off the ground, and if I didn't let off when I did, I would have gone over. Propelling the bike forward is a 1x10 drivetrain consisting of a Sunrace 11-42 tooth cassette which is shifted by a Shimano Dior 10-speed rear derailleur. Out front, it has a 30-tooth chainring driven by FSA Alpha Drive cranks. The Shimano Dior derailleur shifts smoothly, accurately, and with little to no hesitation. With a 1x drivetrain such as this, the cockpit is cleaner by only having one shifter. Shifting is linear, and it's lighter than setups that include a front derailleur. The gear range is good enough for 24 to 26 miles an hour on the top end, and all but the steepest of hills are easy on the bottom end. Some say that a one by drivetrain has too big of a gearing gap between gears, making it feel as if you're skipping gears. However, I haven't felt that issue at all with this bike. The pedals that come on the bike are basic Cannondale platform pedals. The stock pedals were okay, but I was having issues with my feet slipping off of them. Due to this, I replaced them with a pair of Origin 8 Rascal pedals, which are far more grippy, durable, and better looking than the stock pedals. Putting that power to the road is a set of 29 by 2.25 inch WTB Ranger tires mounted on WTB STX I-23 tubeless ready wheels with quick release axles. 29 inch wheels are mounted on all Trail Series bikes with a medium frame or larger. If you need anything smaller, you'll get 27 and a half inch wheels. The larger 29 inch wheels have several advantages over smaller wheels, such as lower rolling resistance at speed, more traction, and easier obstacle clearing. However, this comes with the disadvantages of slower acceleration, more weight, and then they make the bike's handling far less nimble. With the wheels being tubeless ready, all you need to remove the tube is a set of new valve stems and the appropriate sealants. Going tubeless has the advantage of being able to run lower tire pressure with a lower risk of getting a flat. Lower tire pressures translate to better traction on the trail. I will say though that the only time I have traction issues with the stock tube setup is on leaves and pine needles while going uphill and on sand. The Trail 5 comes equipped with Cannondale Stage 3 saddle with its seat tube secured to the frame with a quick release. It's a long, slender, and attractively styled saddle with Cannondale lettering. At first glance it looks uncomfortable. I thought so as well the first few times I rode it. However, after putting several miles on it and getting used to it, I find it more comfortable than any of the cruiser or comfort style saddles that I've used. Rounding out the spec list is the frame, the part of the bike that Cannondale has a strong reputation of getting right. Mine is a medium sized frame made from Cannondale's Smartform C2 alloy. Other models within the trail lineup use the same frame geometry and sizing, but in different aluminum alloys. The welds on it are particularly smooth and flowing, and the design is very attractive. Top it off with a beautiful orangish color called Acid Red and tasteful graphics, and this bike is one heck of a looker. I absolutely love this bike. It's a true pleasure to ride on or off-road. If you're new to mountain biking and want a solid performing first ride, or someone looking for a good all-around performer, go to your local Cannondale dealer and give it a test ride. This bike has transformed my life. I'm normally the type of person that despises physical activity and have lived a pretty sedentary lifestyle. To top that off, I ate nothing but junk food and drank mostly soda. The day I bought this bike, I decided to ride it home from the shop. That one ride really woke me up to just how out of shape I really was. Probably the worst shape of my life. After two and a half miles, I couldn't ride any further and I still had another mile and a half to get home. After taking a long break in a church parking lot, I was able to slowly make it the rest of the way home. Once home, I could barely walk. Despite the difficulty I had getting it home, I really enjoyed the ride. I was hooked. From that moment on, I began to ride as much as I could and watch what I ate and drank. 
Within about a week, I started to feel better and not as tired without drinking near as much caffeine as usual. In three months since I purchased this bike, I've tried to ride at least three days out of the week, if not every day, and have probably put a total of around 200 miles or so on it. I recently had my longest ride ever of over 21 miles, which included 9 miles of trail. As a matter of fact, my first video on this channel was about that day. If you own a Cannondale Trail or are considering purchasing one, let me know what you think of it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. And thanks for watching.